Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and here's a question. What is the strangest, most unusual in many respect moon in the solar system? Which moon has the most records for a lot of different things? Well, you've probably guessed from the title already. Ganymede. It's a moon that we don't really talk about much, but it's a moon that I wanted to talk about today because we just discovered something even more unusual about it. So even though we don't really talk about Ganymede much, it is an extremely exciting moon of Jupiter. First of all, as you might already know, this is the biggest moon in the solar system. It's slightly bigger than our own moon, and could even become its own planet if it wasn't orbiting Jupiter. It's surprisingly similar in terms of size and mass to Mars, and so in that sense, if it wasn't in orbit around anything, it would definitely be a planet. Also, unlike other moons and unlike other objects in the solar system, it seems to possess its own magnetosphere, which is even stronger than the one around Mercury. And this was of course a really big surprise to scientists when they discovered, first with the Voyager probes that visited Jupiter back in 1970s, and later with the Galileo mission that officially ended in 2003. And all of the discoveries about Ganymede so far have been pretty amazing. Here's by the way what this unusual moon looks like if you were to look at it with enhanced colors. So first of all, a few years ago we discovered that the magnetic field here is even stronger than we originally thought, and it also seems to produce a lot of really unusual effects that technically Earth produces, but in our case we get this from the solar activity. Whereas in case of Ganymede, these effects are produced by the very powerful radiation coming from Jupiter. In other words, Jupiter to Ganymede is kind of same to what the um, Sun is to our own planet Earth. But even today we still have no idea, no clear indication on how the magnetic field inside this moon is produced, because no other moon seems to possess such a strong field, and as I mentioned previously, this magnetic field is even stronger than inside Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun. So even though it's not as strong as the magnetic field of planet Earth, it's much stronger than any of the other terrestrial planets, and obviously much stronger than any moon in the solar system. Apart from this, we also think Ganymede probably has the most water of all of the objects in the solar system. And here the water mass is maybe about 6 to 7 times larger than all of the water from planet Earth. So despite the size differences, by mass Ganymede has approximately 46% of water. Which by the way is one of the potential explanations to the magnetic field. Maybe the salt water somehow is able to produce the tremendously powerful magnetic field that other moons don't have. But now there is a new record that Ganymede also has. It also might be the object with the largest confirmed ancient impact event from an object that was about 140 kilometers across that produced something that's around 8000 kilometers in diameter which is roughly around 5,000 miles across. In other words, what this recent research suggests is that Ganymede also possesses the largest impact structure in the solar system, at least the one we've found so far. This would be double the size of the nearby moon known as Callisto, and this right here is the Valhalla crater that was the previous record holder. It would also be larger than the Martian crater known as Utopia Planitia, which covers the northern part of Mars, and is most visible right here on the Martian topography maps, and it would also be bigger than the lunar South Pole Aitken Basin that you see right here, that is currently being explored by the Chinese U-22 rover that you see on the screen. And the way that the scientists were able to identify this crater, that's actually not even visible if you look at this from anywhere on the surface, is by looking at these tiny formations known as furrows, that you can kind of start seeing if you were to look at the surface really closely. By looking at many of these furrows in detail, the scientists realized that many of them were forming these concentric circles, all pretty much centered around this imaginary point in the middle. And this was actually visible on both sides of the moon. And because all of these furrows are some of the most ancient formations on the moon, billions and billions of years old, it only suggests that something really early on in the creation of the solar system collided with the moon, creating this large formation and essentially forming all of these furrows that we see across the moon's surface. And in general, Ganymede's surface can be divided into two major types. There's the dark type that you see here, and there's the light type that's uh, around this area. For the most part, the light areas are much younger than the dark areas. 
This also becomes more apparent because the light areas here don't have as many craters on the surface, meaning that the light areas were most likely changed relatively recently, whereas the dark areas remain the same for a very long time. Across these dark areas, pretty much every crater that had any kind of furrows around it all seem to be pointing in the same direction. You can actually kind of see some of them right here. And if you were to trace this, and if you were to try to find the focus of this unusual line formation, all of these foci points seem to be pointing right here in the middle. And for this to happen completely by chance is almost impossible. So something must have definitely occurred early in the creation of Ganymede for these unusual formations to look this way. And if this is correct, and if this is indeed what happened, in other words, if there was a very large collision with an object approximately 150 kilometers across, I really needed to recreate this collision in Universe Inbox. So from what the scientists speculate in the paper, the object was around this big in comparison to the moon, and it was moving about 20 kilometers per second. And this of course was a very very powerful collision. And you're about to see what's going to happen to this moon if this object collides with it. So this is a pretty powerful collision, and it would definitely produce really dramatic, really huge effects across the entire object. And this collision might also explain why this moon is somewhat different from all of the other moons in the solar system. But unfortunately this wasn't as spectacular as I was hoping this would be. I guess in that sense, uh, some simulations, like the ones that the scientists used here, are definitely a lot more accurate because they show you how the entire surface of this object would have been mixed and reshuffled across pretty much the entire surface of the moon and deposited in different layers. And this would also produce the rings we're observing, which are almost 8,000 kilometers across. And remember, the moon itself is only about 5,000 kilometers across. So this is actually even bigger than the entire diameter of the moon. But interestingly, I was trying to find out why was this collision so powerful, even compared to some of the other asteroid collisions in the solar system. Now we think that this definitely happened during the so-called late heavy bombardment, during which many objects, including our planet Earth, received a lot of collisions, but some of the papers pretty much blame Jupiter for this unusual difference in collisions around different moons. In other words, it's very likely that Jupiter's gravitational pull and the overall proximity of Ganymede to Jupiter compared to Callisto may have caused it to receive much higher, more powerful collisions than some of the other objects in the solar system. And the term for this would be gravitational focusing. In other words, the pull from Jupiter increased the speed of these asteroids as they collided with different objects. Now unfortunately, we don't really know much else about these rings right now, and we're not really going to be able to prove or disprove this for a pretty long time, but there might be a mission planned to Europa at least in 2032, this mission is known as Clipper, that might also help us answer a lot of questions about Ganymede by studying Europa, and by possibly even having a probe to land on this object. Although right now this is in distant future, way way past 2030. So we don't really know if we're going back there anytime soon. And the current mission around Jupiter known as Juno is unfortunately not designed to study any of the moons, so it's not going to help us answer any of these questions. In other words, we need to wait for another mission to get here before we can find out more about these moons and more about what's happening on the outside and also inside of them. So until we get more information about this, that's unfortunately all I was going to mention in this video. You can check out more videos I made about Jupiter and its moons in one of the playlists, and you can also subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back more to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt I'm wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.